All right, we're gonna take a look at the evolution of the different crossbows that I've owned. In the picture here, this is Big Beast, a deer that I shot. I was hunting with my dad's friend, Mark. And when Big Beast stepped out, Mark thought that was a really good time to talk, which I do understand. He said something like, oh my God. And I said something like, shut up. And I did end up getting it. We didn't find it till the next day, but I actually shot it right behind the quad. You can't see, I shot it about here. Uh, the last blood we found was like here behind me. And then how they always say about deer going downhill, we found it the next day, like maybe 50 yards downhill, like right here. So it really didn't go far. We looked all over the place. Mark, Mark walked all the way down this valley, down to the Slippery Rock Creek, out this way and up this hill. And we looked everywhere, but we found it close by. So don't forget to look downhill from the last place that you find blood or sign. Anyway... This was Big Beast. Let's get on to the first crossbow that I bought. I got the Barnett Recruit maybe seven years ago from Trader Horn. Everyone around Elwood City and Western Pennsylvania loved, loved Trader Horn. It's gone now though, and I don't think we're ever gonna get it back. The only thing I didn't like about the Barnett Recruit, you can see real easy in this picture, is right here, it had a plastic arrow retention bar, which actually worked okay. I never had a, any issue with it except for the one time when I put my caulking rope on upside down, it did break it. Barnett then sent me two or three of them for free. And eventually they did get a little bit too weak. So I ended up stuffing like a piece of foam in here to have them hold the arrow down stronger. Because otherwise, occasionally you'd have to push the arrow back in further. And since then even, Barnett has gotten rid of this and there is now a brush it looks like a toothbrush that holds your arrow down it works really good this is a great crossbow it's super light it shoots 300 feet per second so out to 30 yards you're good on pretty much any deer and it's inexpensive you could probably still find one maybe look on ebay and all these crossbows if they are available on amazon then i will have links in the description so the recruit was the first one 300 feet per second and I got a lot of deer with that crossbow and I doubt that I will ever get as many deer with any other crossbow as I got with that one. Maybe with the Raven that I have now, maybe I'll catch up, but I highly doubt it. And I also missed a lot of deer with that one. Okay, here's the next one. This has the exact same dimensions as the Barnett Recruit. And it's probably the same weight. This is a lightweight crossbow and I still have it and I'll probably never get rid of it. Monzi is testing it out in this shot right here. Monzi. <laughs> but this is the Barnett Raptor FX2. You can also get the Barnett Raptor FX. I think the only difference is the camo pattern. So this is the Raptor FX2. Uses a caulking rope and you're getting, you're going from 300 feet per second to 330 feet per second. I got some deer with this one but I'm sure nowhere near as many as I got with the Recruit. This is lightweight and I will probably keep it forever and I might not ever have to change the strings on it. You could hunt with this from a young age. You can hunt with this your entire life if you wanted to. Have I shot this crossbow? Uh, maybe. This is Keegan speaking. <laughs> Keegan wanted to know if he shot this and he might have. I am pretty sure I have for testing. Yeah, he... And I might actually oh, shoot yeah, this no, one. Yeah, Keegan did shoot this one before. It's pretty fun. All right, so then I moved on to the Centerpoint CP400. I didn't have it for real long. It wasn't giving me accurate results. It turned out the problem was not the crossbow. The problem was I was using a lead sled instead of a bipod. So I got rid of that and I went to the Raven. But let's talk a little bit more about the CP400 first. The only thing I didn't like about it was the foot stirrup is kind of huge. And the adjustable buttstock in the back, it wiggles a little bit. Now, when you have it up to your shoulder, it's not gonna be wiggling at all. It's not gonna affect accuracy, but it just doesn't lock in tight. It has a little bit of a wiggle. And like I said before, if I would've just switched to a bipod on this crossbow, I might've just kept it. But the lead sled was making it inaccurate. I didn't realize that, so I got rid of it and I went on to the Raven. Now, I got the Raven. I was having the same um, problem or I really can't remember exactly when I got the problem solved, but as soon as I switched away from a lead sled to a bipod, this is the one that I make, 
this was shooting great. And I'm sure the center point CP400 would have shot great. And I know that my stock arrows would have shot pretty good, but but I did end up going with the Bork Holder arrows. Now I have some from John Smith, and his information is in the description below. Also, you can get custom arrows from him. And your rest on the crossbow right there at the end. Yeah, there's information for my rests and the heart drop hangers that I make, and I'm going to have a product for the Raven R500 real soon. Yeah, go ahead. So now I'm on to the Raven R29. I personally do not want an R29X. I don't want limbs that have to hold more energy than the R29. I do have an R500, but that's just for product development. And I really don't think those the R500 limbs are under much more pressure than the R29. It might even be the same amount of draw weight. But they have an advantage of larger cams, so you're getting more leverage. And it might even have a longer power stroke. But I like the R29. I don't want anything with any more energy than this. If I was going to buy another crossbow for fun, I would probably skip over the 10 points, even though they're cool. I'd probably go right to a Scorpid, go for the maximum efficiency, maximum um, quietness level, and I'm going to say maximum accuracy with a Scorpid. So if I ever buy another crossbow, good chance it's going to be a Scorpid. Let's see if you have any more pictures here. Oh, okay. Do. Just another picture of the Raven R29. This was early phase. This was the first model of the bipod I was making. This was with a heavier steel, and it turned out that the the base on this one, I ended up finding a stronger base than this one. So we have a lighter steel now, and I'm going to be switching to an even lighter steel, and maybe eventually switching to aluminum for that. And the other products I have are all aluminum. Yeah. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Check out other videos and subscribe for more and hunting products and more fun videos to watch. And check out Grunge Fly 3000. From Backyard Broadheads, these are Heart Drop Hangers. There's a Heart Drop 5 and 1 for most Raven crossbows and the Heart Drop 5 and 1 R26 for the Raven R26. You can check them out on eBay or from BackyardProducts.com. Both links are in the description below. This is another accessory for your Raven crossbow, the 4-in-1 light. It attaches and detaches in seconds. It's an extremely level bipod. It's a hanger. It's a kickstand. It helps you with caulking and decaulking your crossbow. It helps eliminate death wobble from decaulking. And then whenever you're in your tree stand, it helps stabilize the crossbow on your lap. And you can also rest it up on the shooting rail to keep your crossbow off of the rail and protect your crossbow.